Hello everyone, thank you for coming to my presentation. The title of my paper is XMVDLA, Runtime Accuracy Configurable and VDLA based on employing voltage or scaling approach. The authors are me and my advisor, Professor Masoud Pedra. So the outline of my presentation as, is as follows. The first part is the introduction. The second part, I will talk about the proposed method. In the third part, I will discuss the experimental result, and in the last section, I will conclude my presentation. Now I will start the introduction part, which will cover um, the introduction and also some background, background material. This is showing uh, microprocessor data for 42 years, uh, which shows that the number of transistors has increased, the number of logical cores has increased, uh, the performance of a single thread has been improved. So all of these will increase the power concern, will increase the temperature, but in order for us to um, maintain the power in an acceptable range and reduce the temperature, we have to use low power techniques, which one of those low power techniques is to scale the voltage. So uh, why accelerators are important? Uh, and a neural network accelerator is a processor that is optimized specifically to handle neural network workloads. It is very efficient in doing this job of taking data and clustering and classifying at a very fast rate. So why approximate computing is important? Because approximate computing is, the most, is one of the efficient way of reducing the power consumption. It is also appropriate for applications where some level of output inaccuracy may be tolerated. So applications related to human perception is one example of these applications. And also applications already working on imprecise sensor data is one of the uh, applications that can be used. Uh, that is one of the applications that approximate coding can be used for that one. So approximate techniques uh, can be used in different ways. One of the ways is to have an app approximating the algorithm but using exact arithmetic and memory units. But the other way is to use the exact algorithm and then using approximate arithmetic and memory units. And then uh, for approximating the arithmetic units, uh, you have two way, two methods. The first method is to approximate the hardware and then which means simplifying the logic or modifying the logic. Uh, of the arithmetic unit, uh, but using the nominal supply voltage. But the other way is, which is the focus of our work, is to use the exact logic or circuit, but operated at a lower voltage. And then uh, we call this method voltage or scaling or WUS. So in this slide, I want to talk about the advantages of the voltage or scaling technique. So one of the most important feature of the WOS is there is no requirement for uh, redesigning the circuit. You can use um, the circuit that you have uh, with the WOS. So other, other design approaches, they need to redesign the circuit. So for the WOS, there is a little bit of architecture change or circuit change that you need to do. And then uh, that's a really attractive uh, feature of the WOS. And the second, uh, feature of WOS which is really uh, attractive is that you can have runtime accuracy level adjustment. So uh, while the system is running, uh, you can uh, adjust uh, the, the, the accuracy of the system or the circuit or the architecture based on the user's wish. So if a user wants to save some uh, energy or battery, um, they can reduce the accuracy on the fly while the system is working with a little bit of uh, uh, timing overhead. And also we will uh, reduce uh, the dynamic and uh, leakage power uh, because of this uh, square and exponential dependence dependency that um, the power these powers have on the supply voltage. So as you see here, there is a square dependency and also here is the exponential dependency and then again here is a uh, dependency which is power of three which all of these are a uh, significant dependency which by reducing the supply voltage you will gain a lot of uh, energy reduction. So why we have chosen the NVDA the accelerator? Um, so NVDA stands for NVIDIA Deep Learning Accelerator. The, the most important feature about this accelerator is it 
is it because that this accelerator is open source, both the hardware and also the software code. So this was uh, really uh, important for us when we were choosing um, the NVDLA. And also, it is scalable and also configurable. And the design of this architecture is in a modular way, uh, which all of these three parameters make, it, make this uh, design an attractive choice. And then we have uh, chosen to go with this one. So um, now I'm going to give an overview of the NVIDIA architecture core block, which is this one. And then um, this core block has uh, multiple parts, which has configuration interface block, memory interface block, convolutional buffer, convolutional core, and then STP, PDP, CDP, Rubik, and bridge DMA. But the focus of our work will be on this convolutional core, which is an important part of uh, the NVDLA. So here I'm going to go to the overview of the convolutional core, which has uh, which is a five stage pipeline. Um, the first one is the CDMA, and the second one is the CBUF, and the third one is the CSC, and the fourth one is CMAC, and the fifth one is CAC. Um, the first one is the CDMA, which is used to obtain the data, and then this CBUF is a buffer, which uh, stores the data that is being uh, fetched uh, from the memory. And also this uh, CSC is a convolutional se sequence controller, which uh, controls what kind of data is going through the CMAC. And the CMAC is a convolutional MAC, uh, which is an array of the multipliers. And also this CAC is a convolutional accumulator. And then we will be focusing on the CMAC, uh, which contains the multiply array. So this is overview of the CMAC, which is an um, MAC array. So as you see uh, here, we will have a 10,024 multiplier. We have uh, this uh, convolutional buffer, which is an SRAM bank. We have this convolutional sequence controller which obtains uh, the weight and uh, feature data from the SRAM banks and then provide it all the way to the multipliers. And then these multipliers will multiply the feature by the weight and then prov provide it to the adders, which these adders will add up these uh, the, the, the production which has been created by the multipliers and then provide it to the convolutional accumulator. So these are the partial sums. And then in this way, we have the channel direction. And then from up to down, we have the kernel direction. And um, yeah, that's it for this one. Now I will explain the proposed method. So in this slide, I want to talk about the approximate multiplier, which we have used for the XMVDLA architecture. The name of the approximate multiplier is X dada, which we have proposed in our previous um, paper which we, uh, I have brought it here um, for your reference. And the main idea is to use lower voltage levels uh, for the columns which correspond to the least significant bits and use exact voltage for, uh, for the columns which correspond to the most significant bits. So as you see here, these columns are, uh, are, are, are in the approximate part and these columns on the left hand side are for the exact part. For the approximate part, we need to provide a, a lower voltage levels. So, uh, and then we have multiple choices. And then for us, for, in order to select between these uh, multiple voltage, uh, lower, lower voltage levels, we need to use a power switch box. And also, um, so the signals coming from the approximate part to the exact part needs to be in the exact, uh, in, in the exact uh, nominal voltage of the system or the circuit, so we will have we we don't encounter any extra errors in the exact part. So here is the level shifters. For example, this this uh, signal is coming from approximate to the exact part. The voltage that the signal has on the right hand side is lower. So by the le level shifter, its voltage will be uh, matched up to the nominal voltage of the circuit. So, so in this slide, I'm going to explain the fine grain approach. The fine grain approach means 
that each multiplier in this MAC array can have a specific voltage level, which can be 400, 500, 650, 750, and 800. So um, the user will have the flexibility to assign um, any any voltage level from these choices to, to each of these multipliers. But the, the cost is that each of these multipliers needs a power switch box uh, to provide the voltage level that is needed for each multiplier. And all of those voltage rays have to be um, routed to each of the multipliers uh, to provide the flexibility for each multiplier to, to get a specific voltage that the user is assigning to. So in this slide, I'm going to show you the medium grain approach, which means each row of the multipliers in the MAC RA can be assigned to any of these uh, voltages. So instead of, uh, instead of each uh, multiplier having a specific voltage level, uh, each row has a specific voltage level. So the benefit of this approach is that each row has a power switch box in compared to the fine grain method, which each multiplier has a power switch box. So there is a trade-off here that uh, how, the, how, the, how the user wanted to go forward. Is it like it wants more flexibility or they want uh, less cost of having uh, multiple power switch box for each uh, multiplier and having all of those uh, voltage rays going down uh, to each of these multipliers. So one of the methods um, that I have not talked about uh, in the previous slide is the coarse grain mode, which means that all of the multipliers in the MAC array will be assigned to a single voltage level. And then, um, but we still have five options for the voltage level that we had for the, core, the fine grain mode and the medium grain mode. Um, and then um, one other thing we have to talk about is like what kind of voltage that will be assigned to the multiplier, either in the fine grain mode or the coarse grain mode. So I have to also mention that we have only showed the results for the fine grain mode and the coarse grain mode. And then um, based on, uh, so for the fine grain mode, each weight will determ determine uh, the, volts, the, the voltage level or the volts level. So uh, how we will decide, so we will define some intervals for example, for this type of interval, we have 0 to 5, 5 to 10, and all the way to weights greater than 20. And then, um, so for reducing the accuracy degradation, we have ap applied the, the lower voltages to the smaller weights. So in, in this way, we will reduce uh, the accuracy degradation. And also, different kind of intervals can be defined. Uh, so we, as you see here, we have defined three kind of intervals. And then we have applied uh, the, 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 the exact voltage level to the, to the weights which are the greatest. And also here we see um, this uh, plot which shows um, the energy reduction for, uh, for different voltage levels. And then also uh, w there are multiple options for the width of the approximate part of the multiplier. Which, which includes uh, one, one bit all the way to 13 bits. But here we have chosen three options, nine bit, 11 bit, and 13 bit. And in order to calculate the energy reduction, we have calculated the number of uh, multiplication which have, uh, which have occurred uh, in the specific voltage level. For example, we have calculated the number of uh, multiplication which have been happening in was uh, one, which means uh, the voltage level of one and then we have also we also have the amount of energy reduction we have uh, for each multiplication which is being um, executed in that specific voltage level which is was one and also for was two was three and was four and then we have divided by the total number of multiplication and multiplied that by 100 and so let's continue to the next slide now i will explain the experimental results so before explaining the experimental result, I want to explain the simulation setup we use for uh, generating those uh, results. Uh, we have installed all the hardware, software, and Vitra platform on the car computer cluster of USC. Um, I want to emphasize that each ResNet50 inference take 
takes 10 hours, so that's a long time. And also, each reported point in the next result figures have taken 2,000 CPU hours, which is again a long uh, re computing resource and a long time. Also, for uh, quantization, quantization of the neural network models, we have used the Tensor RT tool for analyzing the dynamic range per layer tensors and calculate the scale factors. And the technology we used was 15 nanometer FinFET technology, and the voice levels we have considered for our architecture are 750 millivolt, 650 millivolt, 500 millivolt, and 400 millivolt, which are going to be applied uh, to the multipliers of the MAC array. Also, for the Linet 5, we have used the MNIST data set, but we have uh, selected 200 images from the, the, that large data set. Also, for ResNet 50, we have used the ImageNet data set, which have, again, selected 200 images uh, for the experimental results. So, in this slide, I'm going to show the plot which represents the energy reduction versus accuracy um, reduction. Um, the results have been shown for the ResNet 50 based on the ImageNet data set. Each data point has three parameters. The first parameter is the, is the approximate approximation width. Uh, the second one is showing is the method the fine grain or the coarse grain. And the third one is the, the type of the interval that has been used to assign uh, the voltage level to the multiplier based on the weight. Um, so the results show that the fine grain uh, will provide uh, more energy reduction and in compared to the coarse grain and also lower accuracy reduction will be happening for the fine grain method versus the coarse grain method. And also um, this point, um, the 13 and then the fine grain mode and then the interval type of 10, um, will provide us the highest energy reduction, which is 35%. And also we will only have only 5% reduction of the top one accuracy and 3% reduction for the top five uh, accuracy. Now I will cover the conclusion part. So in this work, uh, we presented XMVDLA where the WOS technique is applied to the computation units of the MVDLA for improving the energy efficiency and also the lifetime and reliability. This technique, is this technique is applied at the bit level resolution, which enables the realization of a runtime accuracy configura configuration configurable implementation of a deep learning accelerator. Also, the energy versus accuracy characteristic of the XMVDLA was assessed by executing the inference phase of the Linet 5 and ResNet 50 neural networks. The results revealed that the energy consumption of the convolutional core of the MVDLA decreased by about 35% with a 5% reduction in the top one accuracy for ResNet 50. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation. If you have any question or doubt, please contact me with the email I have provided you. My email is hapsadikusha at sanjime.com. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.